Hi, uh, my name is Elliot Mack. I am the founder and CEO of Lightcraft Technology. And today I want to tell you a bit about reinventing a virtual production with Jetset and Blender. And uh, just to give you an idea of what we're all about, uh, let's do a quick trailer. All right, that's a that's a fun project we did with uh, Alex Hanneman. Alex is an ex Weta compositor uh, who worked on huge projects, uh, you know, Avengers, etc., and uh, left and started his own online compositing academy. He's at compositingacademy.com, runs the YouTube channel, and he's now taking all the things he learned from his high end work and teaching people how to use them on on YouTube. So that's he's a fantastic guy to work with. So highly recommended. And you know, we wanted to show what was possible with really a, a kind of a tiny setup, in this case, a barn in Quebec and a couple of people on set. Uh, but before we uh, we jump into that, let's see a bit of where uh, Lightcraft uh, is coming from. So Lightcraft has been around for a few years and uh, we've been building virtual production systems to combine live action and CGI for the whole time. And the first systems we built were big, expensive, powerful, and frankly, a pain in the neck um, to operate. I mean, they worked, but boy, um, this is an example of one of our big installations down in TV Globo uh, in, in uh, Rio. And you can just see what it used to take to make virtual production work. I mean, we have giant targets in the ceiling. You have to get a laser survey tool. You have this big box on the camera. You have, you know, all these things, you know, 14 foot wide lens calibration board. And it was, it worked. And it was wild to see people's reactions when we'd be on set. Because normally people are on a green screen stage. You can't see what you're doing. And then you light up this real-time compositing, the camera is moving and people just love it everywhere around the world. But whenever we fired it up, it was just, uh, it was just, you know, fascinating to see the kind of overjoyed reactions people have, because then you can finally see, you know, the movie you're making, right? Yeah, it's, that's a, it's a great thing. Uh, but that's, as I said, that was, those were $150,000 systems and it took a team of people to run them and a huge setup. And, uh, this is what we're actually going to be talking about uh, today is where we've gone. And this is what this has turned into. And uh, Alex is running this in the barn. There are a total of two people on set uh, for this project. Uh, Alex and uh, his uh, his wife is in the hazmat suit. That's a very understanding woman. And you can see he's operating everything. He's just got a, uh, a Ronin gimbal. He's got a Sony FX3. Uh, he's got Jet Set Cine mounted on top and running on an iPhone. And you have a single operator running both camera and automatically pulling focus and running a complete virtual production system in the iPhone. And that's the power of this. So how did we get there? How do we uh, make a, a full feature film uh, set of shots in a, uh, a barn in Quebec? Well, number one, of course, is Blender. We're at the Blender conference. And so this is a key part of it. And uh, he built that entire digital set uh, with a set of, uh, of the set of kind of kit bashing components from a company called Big Medium Small, a fantastic company. And this industrial set was only about $199. So he bought it. And it comes with a bunch of kind of prefabricated CG pieces. And in Blender, he's just going to, you know, shift D, you know, GX and copy things and paste them until he has a factory. Uh, it literally is, is about that simple. Anyone here is going to be able to do this pretty easily. Um, and so that's how he builds a complete digital set. Now, the question, of course, then comes is how do you match that set to your live action world? And the answer is a, is a technique that we've built at Lightcraft called scene locators. And what these are, they're just 3D nulls, you know, 3D empties at specific points in the scene. And they have a special name called scene loc underscore, and then whatever you name them. So that scene locator prefix is what is automatically recognized in Jet Set. And the key to these things is that they let you reference a given point in the live action scene to different points in the 3D scene. So in this case, we're going to use the same little block of floor and he's going to reference it to multiple different spots in the CG catwalk. And he's going to be able to shoot from different locations uh, using the same uh, physical scene, just by picking a different scene locator and matching it to the local origin. We're going to need a little bit of a practical set and uh, not much of one. So what you see here is a couple of extension ladders and some uh, industrial flooring uh, that Alex found to roughly match the digital floor that he had in his blender model. Uh, he bought a couple of green tarps from Amazon and uh, two, uh, 
aperture lights, uh, I think $295 each. And what you have is, is basically all you need. And one of the key things here is that it's a practical floor. Uh, that makes everything work much, much better, both on the tracking and on the compositing side. It's very, very difficult to composite a green floor and have it look right. Uh, the green reflects too much onto clothes and shoes, etc. cetera. Uh, but if you use a, just a little bit of a practical floor, it solves an enormous number of problems. And so Alex is a composite compositor and he, and we, uh, we, he knew exactly what to do. All right. The next thing you're going to need is jet set cine. That's what we build. And. Uh, the first thing we'll, we'll do is they're going to load in the 3D model from Blender. So you're going to export from Blender as a USD file. Uh, Blender 4.0 now has a very, very good integrated USD exporter. And you can actually get a surprising amount of geometry in the phone. Uh, you can't get that much texture in the phone, but that's okay. You just are using this model for blocking. We're going to push the data back into Blender to actually render. So what you want to have in the phone is just a geometric reference of your scene. So we can crunch down the textures and it'll work fine. And then we can load into that entire factory will fit into an iPhone 15. And in this case, uh, we're going to actually also export the scene locators that we mentioned earlier. And it's important to note, uh, Jet Set actually has a free version on the App Store, and we deliberately, deliberately made that free version very powerful. The free version of Jet Set has the full 3D scene loader in it. So you can actually, you know, test the entire uh, you know, USD loading system inside Jet Set and try out your scenes with it. Uh, so you're, you're going to want to try that out. So here you can see we've got the entire digital factory loaded in the phone and we're going back and forth uh, between the live action and the fused live action CG version. Uh, Jet Set includes a built-in green screen keyer as well as AI matting. Uh, so you can actually uh, pick whichever way you want to mix your live action and CGI scenes. And next comes scanning. So for post-production visual effects, you really want a, uh, a representation of what the live action world was, it's, it's geometry. And built into Jet Set Pro and Jet Set Cine is an integrated scanning system. And it uses the iOS LiDAR that's built into uh, Pro versions of phones, uh, the iPhone Pro and the iPad Pro. And this lets you scan very quickly uh, and have it automatically aligned with your tracking data. And this turns out to be extremely useful in post. You can use a whole uh, bunch of different uh, tracking techniques like survey tracking and other kinds of things that use scene geometry to match things in. So you can see in this scene that it's really scanning as quickly as we can move the camera around. And it gives a, it's a relatively coarse, but you can actually really see where the geometry of the floor and of the catwalk is. Next, we're gonna calibrate. And that's what the core of Jet Set Cine is all about. Uh, it lets us connect an Axon CMO from the Cine camera to the iOS device, in this case, an iPhone. And that takes in real-time video from the, from the Cine camera. And that lets us do a real uh, Cine level lens calibration. That means we're calculating the actual optics of the cine lens. We're calculating the distortion, the focal length, the offset between where the cine lens is and the iPhone lens is. And this gives us all the information we're going to need to resynthesize a visual effect shot in post-production using the frames from the Sony FX3 instead of the frames from the iPhone. And this is pretty quick. It's going to take about two minutes to calibrate a lens. Well, you can see what the process is here. We've got both of the feeds going in. Uh, we have the Jet Set Live video on top, and we have the Cine feed coming in the bottom. When you click Test Frame, it's actually correlating and finding you know, feature points in the scene and matching them together. This is one capture, and we'll move over uh, around and do about 10 different captures from different points of view in the scene, and then we have enough to do a, a 3D solve. Next thing we're going to have is a digital slate, and this is integrated into, into Jet Set, and this is really useful. Uh, it just, it's just a web browser. Uh, you can take an iPad and link to it and just hold the iPad in front of the Cine camera just like you would a normal traditional Cine slate. You know, except this is a digital version of it, so it has a lot of useful information that is automatically populated on the slate. Uh, and it shows the project information and it does something really special, which is that when you roll Jet Set, it's going to fire a series of black and white markers. And those markers represent the unique take ID that each Jet Set take has. And those can be viewed by both the iPhone and the Cine camera. And what that does is it lets us later on in post-production automatically detect uh, which take of the Cine camera is associated with, with, with which Jet Set take and do the synchronization. And this is really helpful because Jet Set takes are named something sensible like, you know, scene 101, take 25, you know, and, and with a project prefix. And the typical Cine uh, camera file name is something really helpful like A3092.mov, right? It's not, not easy. 
Uh, and so traditionally you have a, an army of uh, assistant editors go through and individually, you know, figure out which take belongs to which one. We can do it automatically and optically with this digital slate. So let's just see what it looks like. So you can see he's hit roll. And uh, when he hits roll, it's going to fire this series of black and white markers. And the first uh, three are a set of um, ID markers. And, it, and then it fires the timing markers that go much quicker. And this lets us both identify and time it. Finally, we're going to shoot. We have a, a low latency live preview of the integrated CG and live action scene. That's the core of virtual production is live integration of CGI and live action. We have a, a built-in green screen keyer with a 3D garbage mats. So as you move around, we can automatically remove the background. And it's simple enough to operate. So in this case, you just have a single operator for both the camera and jet set. You don't need a, a dedicated separate virtual production operator for a small for a small shoot. So in this case, you can see uh, there's the live action scene and then there's the track 3D scene. And the great thing about this is that the operator can actually see what they're doing. They can frame with a factory in the background uh, instead of just guessing what's going to be there. And they can see how the shot's going to work together as the camera tracks. All right. Once we've shot, we're going to uh, we're going to need to pull all that data into post production, and that's what we have a tool called AutoShot for. And AutoShot is built to automate all of the really painful things that are re repetitious and frankly boring in visual effects production. And this is basically usually there's a an ingest department that handles all this. You have to do the frame pulls uh, from your camera originals, whether it's an MP4, ProRes, B-RAW. You need to pull the frames from that. You need to do a color space conversion to a standardized color gamut and color space, which we do. We're going to do our optical take mat ID matching that we mentioned earlier, like looking, you know, looking through the takes with machine vision and uh, doing the automatic timing. And finally, we're going to batch create matched 2D and 3D shot file. Uh, we're going to combine the tracking data that we just had from JetSet along with these correctly pulled EXR files matched up. And we're going to drop them right into Blender, Unreal, Nuke, and Cinema 4D, After Effects, you know, synthize, you know, others coming soon. And this is the core of AutoShot, that it automates the construction of your shot um, based upon what you had on set, automatically comes into post-production in a matter of seconds. So let's see how that works. So in this, this is AutoShot. The, uh, the user interface is not pretty. Uh, it, it gets the job done, however. And what it's going to do, it's going to do the frame pulls and it's going to automatically generate a Nuke script. In this case, we're going to go to Nuke and we're going to open up that script and uh, fire it up. And it automatically creates a node tree. Uh, each for each application, it's going to speak to that application in its home language. In Nuke, we're writing a Nuke Python script to automatically align and load the camera tracking data, the scan, uh, and the the individual EXR plates are all cor correctly set in their color space. And so this is the beginning of constructing a shot. And we did this in a matter of a, of a few seconds. And you know, this doesn't this kind of time savings isn't so important if you're just doing one shot. But the whole goal of, of Jet Set and AutoShot is to enable small teams to tackle a show. And as soon as you're dealing with a show, you are dealing with hundreds, you know, dozens to hundreds of shots. And automation becomes the way you can make it through. So here we have, in a few seconds, we have our, our shot uh, matched into Nuke and ready to go. All right, and then we're going to render in, blend, in Blender. And, uh, and in this case, Alex is using all the layers. Uh, just about every layer I can imagine there being, he's going to going to use, and he's going to use them in some really unusual ways, including a lot of numerical data from the Blender file, uh, 3D data that I'd never imagined you would use in compositing. So let's go take a look at how, what he's going to do there. Compositing, this was an eye opener to me. I had actually never seen the extent by which an initial render and um, you know live action plate could be transformed, and he's doing all sorts of things in Nuke. Uh, he's pinning 2D smoke elements to 3D locations. So as the camera tracks, uh, the smoke elements uh, track as well correctly. He's sorting the element display via some depth map binning. So he can you know, crunch the depth maps down so that some plumes of smoke show up behind and some, some of them show up in front of the different objects in the scene. Uh, and he's adding painted light hits via the 3D normal vector data and really resynthesizing a lot of the material properties on the fly. So let's get an idea of how far he's, he's doing, uh, going with that. And I love this wipe because it really shows uh, the transformative effect um, from what was a good render to something that looks like it, it's right out of a movie. And uh, this, this was really exciting for me to, to watch and to see uh, how, how the, really the moving magic was uh, put together. So let's take a quick look at the results. 
material handlers, this is a reminder to please keep your hands inside of the railing system at all times. All right, so that's exciting. And just to get an idea of how transformative this was, uh, this this is one of the shots from behind uh, where there's just nothing there. And everything there is is rendered and composited in, in Blender and Nuke. And in this particular case, the camera tracking data is straight out of Jet Set. Uh, for the shots where there's a lot of uh, floor contact, uh, there's uh, a refinement tracking step. But in this case, the data is straight off the stage. And so looking at all this, uh, we had to say, you know, is Nuke just the answer? Is that how we're, we're going to get there to, to take our 3D renders to, uh, you know, movie magic? And it's it's pretty cool. It has, you know, clean handling of the XR files, you know, open color I.O. Uh, handling, you know, Z-depth, normal data. It has, you know, good linking between the 3D scene information and the 2D elements, which turns out to be really critical. Fast GPU accelerated compositing. So looking at this, would you just say, well, are we just, you know, is Nuke the only thing out there that's going to do this? And I'd say, actually, no. Uh, there's uh, there's another game in town that is now coming out. And this is the automatically generated uh, Blender compositor node tree that we now have in AutoShot. And uh, I, we, I originally built this probably more than a year ago. At that time, the, the CPU-based compositor was kind of slow, uh, and so I, I put it down for a little while. But now, looking at what Blender 4.2 is, is coming up with between EV Next and the GPU accelerated compositor, I think this is going to be a very exciting place uh, for Blender to be, because uh, it really is uh, one of the only games out there uh, that can do both 2D and 3D compositing. And I think that's that's really what you want to see. Um, the, doing this project really convinced me that the power of having both your 3D, uh, you know, processing and your and your compositing, uh, and being able to interactively change that to see how the shot is going to work is just an incredible. It's a superpower. Uh, and EV Next is looking incredible, and that should uh, let you do interactive rendering. You know, if you need to relight elements. And uh, soon, hopefully, we're going to have some live uh, video input. If, if anyone is out there is uh, is interested in uh, working on that on OpenXR and Blender, please let me know, and because we're interested. And uh, that's about it. So I want to say thank you. Uh, this has been fun. And uh, the uh, the QR code in here is actually if you. Uh, Point your iOS device up to that. That will take you to uh, the uh, App Store where you can get the free version of Jet Set. You can load all these scene files that I mentioned. And uh, thanks for watching.